I have a guilty secret. I really do have a thing for Ducatis. I just adore the way they look, the way they sound, and fundamentally how they make me feel. It's not a secret. <laughs> Maybe it isn't a secret, to be fair. Yeah, I really like Ducatis. Worst kept secret. <laughs> Anyway, but you no, know, we had a most fantastic um, we had a most fantastic day at Silverstone, didn't we? The full we circuit, did. We did. Uh, and we could ride any of the Ducatis you could possibly want. So we rode a bit brilliant. of everything. But I think brilliant. you spent most of your time on the Panigale. I did. V four and a little uh, bit of the V two. The yeah, V two, and whereas I was more kind of uh, open to riding all of them. Um, anyway, it was a great pleasure, and you do have a thing for Ducatis. So, and why not? I really do. So that was for Bike World. This is for Motorbike TV. And what I really wanted to do was convince Graham how great Ducatis are. And for me, I, I have liked Ducatis in the past, but I've heard so many amazing things about that V4 engine. My aim was to see just whether I would really love it or not. Now, Lauren and I have never ridden bikes together before. No, we haven't, no. but we're learning to film together, so it's about time we learn to ride together. Absolutely, yes, yes. Um, and it would be very fair to say that we are also exceptionally different in our tastes of bikes. Yeah, yes, I, I, we are. Our natural homes, yep. Yeah. You are a natural-born racer. I'm not happy unless I'm dragging knee sliders on the floor. I only wish I could even think about doing that. <laughs> Never been able to. So my, my kind of natural home is something adventure fast, but not too mental. So trying to find something that would kind of meet both our natural homes, mm -hmm. but also that maybe we could swap and see what, you know, what's the appeal of each other's exactly. bikes. Exactly. It's quite a tricky one. So that is why we have decided to ride these bikes. So to my right, we have the absolutely delicious Panigale V4S. And to our left, we've got the Ducati Multistrada V4S. So you may have noticed they both have a V4. So this is where the comparison kicks in. Totally different geometry, style totally different for two totally different style of riders. And we're going to compare them. So we've identified that two very different bikes have got the same engine. And I think it's credit to Ducati. And to be fair, a lot of manufacturers do do this, that they take the same engine and they tweak it mm -hmm. to use it differently for the necessity of the bike in its frame. So we've got the Panigale, which I think is, is going to be, well, it's at 214 brake and it's going to be geared for power and that, that top speed. You yeah. know, it's a track, track bike. Whereas this is yeah. 170 horsepower, completely different. Not a completely different engine, it's the same engine, yeah, yeah. but made to work in a completely different way. I think they call it detuning, and I'm not totally happy with exactly how they do that, but I'm going to go with some change in gear ratio for a start. And plus, this will pull 186 miles an hour. You don't, don't need that, you're going <laughs> off-road. <laughs> it's about a little kind of pull out of niggly little corners, spinning up the yep. back end and having that sense of control and almost like mid-range torque, yep. which again, I think is one of the great credibilities of a V4 because it gives you everything. Yeah, and speaking of the, uh, the, the, the torque and the credibility of that engine, so I remember reading about the V4 when it first came out, which okay. is four years ago now. Roughly, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I've not ridden one yet. And a bit like the Triumph Triple, where you're meant to have the best of both worlds, you of are. a V-twin and an inline yeah. four. Exactly. However, I think it took them a very long time to get that right. I don't think they got it right until they did the 900, because it never felt to me like the best of both. It felt okay. like you were missing the best of both worlds. But they got it right with the most recent one. So, in theory, this is meant to kind of do a, a similar thing. You still get the talkiness and the character of a twin. Yes. But with the smoothness of an inline four. Yes. So I'm really interested to see how close it gets to that. Yeah, and I, I'm keen to see that too, because with an inline four, you end up with a weight penalty. Like you could stick to a twin, but you're just going to lose that top end. So it's never going to suit a bike like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although I take that back, we've got the V2, <laughs> which is a perfectly credible and capable race bike. But it's a, it's a kind of a long stroke V2. So it's designed for that top end speed, not like a short thumper that mm. we, might, we might find in, um, in, in a, kind of a, a kind of twin Harley or, or, um, or an early twin Triumph, like the Bobber. You know, it's a... It's a it's a good thumpy V2, which yeah. is what you want. Um, so it's going to be really e easy, to, interesting to, to compare the two. Yep. Now to introduce you to a bit more detail about this bike, I wanted to do a comp 
comparison between this and my old V2, which I had, oh, it must be eight or nine years ago. Now that V2 was a fabulous bike. I had some great trips on it. It felt quite small and really flicky. And in the end, that was the reason why I got rid of it, because it felt a little bit too small. And for me, an adventure style bike has got to have a bit of size and a bit of presence. And that's one of the things I love about this new V4. It's a lot wider, and if you look at the front, the beak comes out a bit more. And the naysayers actually criticize that by saying it's actually starting to look a little bit more like hmm, other very well-known, best-selling brands of adventure bikes. But to me, it's still very, very, very much a Multistrada. Unmistakably so from the moment you take a look at it, but it just has a little bit more physical presence. So I am stood next to the full-size model of the Ducati Panigale V4S. And I say that in a bit of jest because I've got the Lego version on my mantelpiece at home. And oh boy, is it beautiful in the flesh. Um, I have actually found some time to look at it. It's honks of beautiful Ducati styling. Honk, who says that? Um, but I, it's, you know, unmistakably it's a Panigale. So I'll talk you through some of the specs and all the gadgets that you're going to get with this bike. Firstly, as you'd expect, it's got a lovely TFT screen, slightly upgraded in terms of the display, so it's even easier to use and more track orientated. Uh, it's got semi-active Odin suspension. Um, and what I really am keen to see is the effectiveness of the different rider modes. It has like a street mode that limits it down to 140 brake but then it's got like a, almost like a street and then a race mode where you can have the HUD 214 at your disposal. They've also chucked some slightly longer gearing in it. So in first gear, it's gonna carry for longer. And I, th I think a couple of the other gears they've adjusted slightly just to make it um, more user-friendly on the track. Um, I'm coming here to the tail. I honestly just adore the tails on these. It's just the fact that it's that kind of 3D geometry, the way you look through it and way that, the way that brake light just looks absolutely beautiful. It's just unmistakably Ducati and absolutely beautiful design. And now we finally have, as you'd expect, the Ford Marchesini wheels. One day I'll say it right. Uh, so you get a slightly different version on the V4S. It's kind of a thinner three-pronged one, which again, even, even more pronounced and an opportunity to kind of show that you've, you've paid for the S model. And then down here, we've got the kind of Euro 5 compliant exhaust. Um, I think it's going to do what I don't like, which is just subdue bikes a little bit, but I'll be interested to see how it feels. So, my first impressions... It's really weird, but having ridden it from Ducati Nottingham, and then taking it onto the road, I was expecting something really feisty. You know, it's 214 brake. You know, I was worried about that kind of snappy throttle mm. response. I've ridden a, a, a kind of a 1098 or 1198, a race that, and it quite literally teleported you from corner to corner with a big bang to it. Whereas this is obviously a V4, not a twin, and it was surprisingly friendly. I was like, why is this so smooth? But then in the same breath, I was like, I felt, not particularly blown away because mm -hmm. you're sat on something so powerful, but the electronics have made it safe. <laughs> you don't have to be too anxious about what you're doing on throttle. But if you're saying that as a racer, yes, for the average punter who is not a racer, yeah. probably perfect. Probably so. I need some space uh, to, to get that where it, where it belongs in that higher rev range without annihilating my license mm. and being safe on the it road. Needs to be on the track, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. So yeah. that's my second observation. I, I, want to, I want to take its reins off and I want to see what yeah. it's like on the track. Yeah. Even riding out from Ducati Nottingham and on the 30 mile an hour roads, I was thinking, wow, that's really, really smooth. And then when we got on the dual carriageways mm. and you got a chance, Wow, yeah. you know, it was. this is a lot of fun. And it actually does, I think, what I expected it to, in terms of that combination of yeah. the smoothness of an inline four, but the character and the It's got the punch, punch when you need it. So what I was just remembering is that I don't have to wait, I don't have to sit in a power band of like, um, it's about nine to 11-ish or where, no, nine to 14 on the R6, whereas that, 
any way you want it. Mm. Um, it. It obviously picks up after about six on mine. I don't know if you noticed the, the rev range on yours, but after six, mine kind of comes more alive than a V4 ever could. Um, what I did notice was, in comparison to the KTM V-Twin, for example, mm. is it's not pulling as much in the lower revs, but that's to be expected, I think. Um, so I am finding myself more in the upper rev range, yeah. but not as much as it would be like the XR yeah. or any, anything with that a That makes sense. Inline four. The other thing that surprised me about that, yep. well, I, I was expecting that to be harder to push around corners because yep. of the bigger front wheel. Mm -hmm. Now, in my limited experience and skill... Bigger gyro. <laughs> didn't make that much difference. No. Didn't make that much difference. So they've got the handling spot on. Absolutely. And they've given it, with a bigger wheel, you're just going to absorb more bumps with it. You can do yeah. more stuff with it. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, first impressions, I'm very blown away by it. I think it's great. Exactly. Mm. I feel partly delighted but frustrated uh, <laughs> because I, I want a V4 and I want to go to the track on it. I'm interested to, to know what you think about riding the multi strada next. Okay. Because the fact you haven't been able to stretch the legs of, of the Panigale, exactly. and I'm, yeah, it's still 170 horsepower, I mean, you're, never, you're never going to stretch, stretch yeah. it. <laughs> but does that make it a kind of more, how much pleasure do you lose as a mm. racer not riding that yeah. versus how much you gain because it's a more road bias bike? Exactly, and, and to be honest, I was in first or second. Mm. And it was like I'm using, you know, a fifth of this bike. If that, <laughs> it's just so I, I, it'd be good to. I'm not going to use, yeah, like you said, I'm not going to use all the, all the Strada, but at least there's more because there'll be more to play with. Yeah, right, time for swaps. Let's do it. So it's that time again when the boys take over the show because apparently us girls can't be trusted. Well, if you want to do it, then go ahead and do it. I don't want to. Well, stop complaining then. It's time for 10 and 10. Right, so welcome to another 10 and 10. We have a very special one this season because it's the first one with the couple. Um, well, no fighting, you know the rules? I will try. Okay, we'll try. so we're going to go straight into it. <laughs> so the first question is, who are you both and why, what do you do? Deep there. Uh, right, Sam. I'm Claire. Hello. Uh, <laughs> well, we, we, I'm, we're both on Adventure Bike TV. Yes. Which uh, we, we do do a little presenting. Yep, exactly. I'm, I'm all about bikes and cooking and eating. So I travel to eat and eat to travel. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam's all about KTMs, basically. Yeah, That's basically around pretty it. much. Um, but, but yeah, we, we did a two year trip around the world. Um, as far as we could get around yes. the world on, on a limited budget. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that that's really our claim to fame. Yeah, so, at the end know. of the day. Yeah. Now he's a designer. And I sell drugs, but legally. <laughs> we'll add that in there. <laughs> um, and other than that, I don't think there's much more to add than that. No, no. We, 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 we're part of the Woodrow's family, yes. in one way or another. As you can say, see, yeah, I am like, sporting one of the t-shirts. So, yeah. Yeah, That's I us. think I think that is. I mean, we're we're pretty boring. This is quite long to talk sixty <laughs> seconds about. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, and you've got to fill it. We, we can't ask any more questions after the first one, so you've got to fill the six. So if it's awkward, then it's just awkward. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right, second question. Well. <laughs> How did you get into motorcycles or motorcycling? Oh, okay. I think we've already done a piece of this on Adventure Bike TV, and funnily enough, the gentleman who uh, helped me onto motorbikes is actually sitting here. Great, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> It was actually watching uh, The Long Way Round. That, that for me was a seminal piece that made me think, do you know what? I, I love traveling. Uh, I, you know, the thought of doing it on a motorbike was something special. quite special, yeah. And then for me, I wanted to go traveling around the world and I met him, saw him on a motorbike, went kind of like motorbikes. Did a bit of a bet with some card games and went, if I lose, we'll go on motorbikes around the world. I'll learn, we'll leave in three months. Boom. You Learned lost. how to ride a motorbike. No. No. <laughs> so, okay. So, and okay, tell us then, um, well, I like your, your inspiration, it's really good. So, um, favorite bike and why? Ooh. 
And don't say to KTM because I'll be really upset. So he's, he's totally going to go KTM. I have to admit, I have I really enjoyed the Ducati Sam Sled. Is it Sam no, Sled? Desert, Desert. Desert. Desert Sled. That's it. That was wicked to drive. I've got a bit of a you see me thing ride. about scramblers at the moment. Yeah, yeah. You're all about. But your, do like your, your favorite bike, obviously, is your 690. Oh, my KTM 690 is my baby. I did try and sell it. And when someone came to buy it, and I was showing them, I was just a bit upset. And I was like, sorry, I have to keep my bike. Uh, so. And I'm sorry to say, Charlie, it is my 990, oh. the KTM 990, <laughs> which is back there. Um, I know, I've been ignoring it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I am a bit of a KTM whore, I'm afraid. You know, orange nothing, runs through my nothing blood. Nothing wrong with that. Right, um, what's your favorite place to ride? And why? Oh, oh, straight off desert. And yeah. sand. I know, I know, Graham, this is a, <laughs> a touchy <laughs> thing for you uh, with sand. Uh, <laughs> yep. But there's nothing like if you get in the right groove in sand, it's almost like snowboarding where you just, the bike is just kind of, oh, it, it, I can't describe it. There's just something, oh, just something about it. But it hurts when you fall off as well, doesn't it? Yeah, people go, oh, it's, it's sand, it, you'll be fine. No, when you're traveling 60, 70 mile an hour, it's, it's concrete. And mm. having to then lug your bike up. See, that's yeah. the thing. I like sand, but I prefer mountains. Mountains are amazing. Mm. Like top of the world highway was quite easily that just moment where you just lose yourself riding and just what you can see around. And the nice thing as well about being on the dirt is like, I want to go over there. Mm. And you just go. I love it. I love it. So you're a bit. Oh, okay, so yep. right, best moment on a motorbike. Best moment on a motorbike. Uh, best moment on a motorbike. There's been so many. Um, well, tell us one for uh, sake. <laughs> <laughs> Just pretend. Make uh, one up. Uh, make one up. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, uh, oh, my the time's riding ticking. To, riding to Prudhoe Bay then. Yeah, Prudhoe Bay. What minus twenty with wind chill? It was freezing. You get off your bike, you could barely. Talk. You'd be talking like this because your bump would be so frozen. But it was just Well, that's your best amazing. moment. Freezing <laughs> it, was, it was fun. It okay, was... Hers, mine was in the white desert in Egypt. Oh, that yeah, was that, good. That was actually. amazing. Sudan as well. Uh, Sudan. Because it's got really compacted deserts and there's these like creme brulee style mountains all around you. Oh, the, you all the pebbles yeah. in the yeah. sand. Yeah. It, it was... That's the only time I didn't ride like James May would ride. I was just, you just, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was just such amazing riding there. Yeah. So maybe Sudan. So well, well, okay, so yeah, opposite of that, <laughs> worst moment on the bike. Oh, oh Prudhoe Bay. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was, I'd had a very, very long time uh, in Africa, and I think I was at my wits end, and we were in Namibia, and they just recently graded this whole track, and riding the bike with full on metal panniers, I wasn't used to it, so we were doing like 60, 70, and as soon as you hit the deep gravel, the whole thing started fishtailing, and I just lost it. Mm. But, the weird thing is, is what I found is everyone gets this when traveling. Like you get that moment where you just can't deal with it and you see red. Mm. I rode the best you could possibly imagine there almost because I was just so scared and she wants to get to campsite. It was For me, uh, I got hit by a policeman <laughs> in Dubai. Yes, that was probably the worst. Hit yes. by a policeman punched. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He used the vehicle. No, no he, he didn't want to damage his, his delicate hands. So he just decided just to go into the side of me. Mexican slam by the policeman. Oh, so the next one is, right, so this one is, um, who are your heroes and influences? Well, oh. yourself and Graham, of course. Yeah. <laughs> apart, apart from us. Should I, should I but, say Tom? Then, then we've got a full no, round yeah, here. No, 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 no. Behind the camera there. And, <laughs> oh my goodness, there's so, there's so many. That's the point. Uh, you've got such a wonderful world of motorcyclists from Sam Mannequin. You've mm. got... Um, so right, do you know what? Do you know what? It's, for me, it's he's not a motorcyclist. I think someone like Brian Blessed. Oh, who he's is, brilliant, isn't he's, he? He's just for a man of his age do you know, to he's be. He's an astronaut. He's yeah. like a trained astronaut. Cos he, well, he's he's cosmonaut. cosmonaut. He's a cosmonaut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's going up to Everest. Uh, well, and as, as in Brian, big boy, yeah. born oh, okay. alive. Yes, him. Born yeah. alive. Yeah. 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 Like, was it? Is he? He, he, he was in. Um, uh, a famous movie. Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, uh, right, oh. me. Um, I want to talk more about him in a minute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what do you do when you're not on a bike? 
think about being on a bike. <laughs> that, that is, that is very um, true. Well, we geeks. Yeah, so we're video, complete gamers. We'll, we'll, we'll play video games. We'll play. Like you know, we're proper nerds. We're yeah. like killing zombies. Saying all the that, time. we are we are building a camper out of a an ex army Unimog. Yep, four by four. Yeah. we did want to take it, you know, to Mongolia and Road of Bones, but that you know, might be out now. <laughs> yeah, COVID, COVID. Hit oh, us. It's all over now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 wanted to go to wanted to see. We were going to take it to see. Uh, the launch of a rocket to the ISS space station in Kazakhstan. Yeah, but taking an ex-military vehicle through those countries so, right now, no, probably. Probably not the best. They just paint it a nice <laughs> friendly Pink. color. Yeah. Pink. Oh. Some neon lights, it'll be fine. <laughs> we'll get all the right attention for that. <laughs> so, but yeah. yeah, gaming. Dogs. Right, so, mm. um, okay. So question nine, and is um, what is next for you guys? Uh, oh my goodness i think so we we want to do more traveling we'll yeah. go up to norway i think we're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna we're getting a tesla in the next month or so yeah. so we're gonna test the boundaries of how far we can take electric cars yeah um i well, mean pretty we, much anywhere these yeah, days yeah exactly at the end of the day <laughs> um and uh it'd be nice to put a bike on the back of it yeah and do that well it'd be interesting well, to take a motorbike or a motorbike an electric yeah, yeah, no, electric uh, motorbike electric I think. motorbike would be yeah. amazing yeah. Um, I think, anyway. So yeah, I, for me, it's probably, I would like to do some form of rally, uh, whether it's on the 990 or if KTM's listening, I will happily take the new 890. I'll be you a know. cheerleader. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take one for the team, you know, <laughs> so yeah. That, that's, that's our, I think, our next one. Next I think bit. so. Yeah. Ooh. Right, yeah. okay. So uh, last question. Um, if you, were, if you were a superhero, what would your power be? <laughs> Do you know what? We both got very similar answers yeah. when we uh, we'll answered this, but when I asked you this when I first met you, I loved your answer because it was so similar to mine. I just, I'd just shoot spaghetti out my hands. And the reason spaghetti. why, yeah, spaghetti. <laughs> like because, carbonara or, or? Well, no, more of a kind tomato. of a, more of an arabiata. More, okay. Do you know what I mean? The more kind of, you know, because, you know, if someone comes up to you. No, 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 it's too fancy. <laughs> But you know, someone comes up to you and you go, "Oh, it's a spaghetti okay. bongola." Exactly. You know, some clams <laughs> you just go, in there. They're having, you know, yip yip yip, and you want to stop. Spaghetti in the face. <laughs> they go, "What's going on?" They'll stop instantly, you know. Or if you have some trouble with the police, spaghetti in the face. Job done. They're, they're so bemused by the spaghetti that they'll forget it. So that that's a superpower of mine. Mine was actually similar, but it was custard. It was just weird that we both. Newtonian fluid, you can run across it. Amazing. And if I you're would, hungry. I may was me thinking it was gonna be a euphemism for something else, but it, <laughs> it, it was actually spaghetti. Spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti and custard. Yeah. Spaghetti and custard. He's made some dessert. <laughs> Sweet. Well, on that note, thank you very much. No, thank you. For yeah. opening you your hearts out to us on this <laughs> 10 and 10. I think I'm not sure if I want to just forget about the spaghetti thing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But no, it'd be wonderfully chatting thank and thank you very much for coming oh along. no thank you it's no thank great. you as always it's a shame about the ktms but you know can't be perfect someone has to take them on <laughs> yeah already. exactly but a lot of people do so <laughs> <laughs> popular bike Thanks, there we go guys. all done talking of things only the boys are allowed to do it's now time for the penultimate part of tales from the trails we are on the Snake Pass and we've stopped at a bit where you can go for a walk to see B-29 bomber parts from a crash that happened. I don't know much history about the crash or anything, but uh, it's about an hour walk and I'm really up for it, but apparently Sam's, <laughs> Sam's not very excited about this kind of hour-long walk to get there and, and find it. And he's, he's like, oh, it's boring history again. Oh, who cares? Oh. So I think he's going to be the one that lets us down and we probably won't be able to do it all because of you. Mm. And Graham, uh, is is that correct? Because no. I, I remember that differently. I remember, I remember going differently. completely differently. Yeah, that's definitely it. I remember, but... I, even, I even said I will get changed into proper trousers and shoes to do the walk. But I, I remember someone whinging. And I can't remember who whinges the most on this tour. Mm. Don't know what you're on about. <laughs> I don't whinge. No, you, you just moan. In a whingy, so, in a whingy, in a whingy way. way. <laughs> yeah. Let's do the walk. I'm happy to. I'm saying this on camera now. If we don't do that walk, it won't be because I didn't want to. Well, then, let's go. Okay, let's go. It's only two o'clock. Woohoo!
but we're uh, we're gonna be all gonna be going for three minutes. Three and a half. How are you feeling? Pretty good. I'm, I'm tempted to run jogging. This will be my last will and testament, probably. Um, these guys just wandering off and leaving me while I, you know, carry all the camera git and stuff. Still, I can do it, prove them wrong. Yeah, oh shit. <laughs> oh dear. Might have a sit down, it's a nice little stream here. Doo -ba -doo. Ah. Not my favourite day ever. I just fell over again. There better be a campsite. There better not be a campsite at the end of this, otherwise I'm going to be pissed. Yeah, we've lost Tom. I didn't take very long. Uh, I know he was desperate for a pee, but he's probably stopped for that. Um, and we just, there are apparently two routes. Oh my God, what's happened to my hair? <laughs> it's like Wurzel Gummidge. <laughs> Wurzel Gummidge with a weird spraggy bit down the side. Um, no wonder they were looking at me like, what is that strange? Anyway, so they, most people we just met on the path said, um, you can have to do a long kind of route round, which does look genuinely twice the distance, or, if you can't see where my finger goes, there's a path, there's that, and apparently it's where that hill is there. That's where we're going. And uh, there's Tom. There we go. There he is. Woo, Tom! Just waiting for the poppet. Hello, poppets. Go on, Tom. You're doing that standing, my friend. So it's taken us an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half to get to the um, crash site for the B-29 bomber. So we are sat literally where the aircraft came down. As I said, it was a B-29. I think we kind of sat where the furrow was ploughed, but from what I've read, it's a good two miles across the, across the hilltop, the wreckage has spread. Um, but this wasn't the only crash. I mean, there were loads and loads of crashes during the Second World War across the Peak District. Um, but I think this is one of the only ones where there's remains you can come and see. So I'm like, yeah, I would say good team effort to get up here, boys. Well done. Yeah, man. It's, quite, it's a very sad story, actually, what happened to this Super Fortress aircraft, because all 13 crew members were killed on impact. So it was a daytime flight. It was a photographic air reconnaissance aircraft, and it only just left their base in Warrington. And they thought they'd cleared this ridge of hills, but because of the low cloud, they actually hadn't cleared them, they just went straight into the hillside. Just as simple as that, daytime. Um, but the aircraft before that had actually been quite famous because it had helped photograph nuclear testing at Bikini Atoll. Um, but it's just incredible that so much of it was aluminium and that's why it's still here. But it's quite moving really, just to know these, those, you know, those 13 M and lost their lives here. No. 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 
a lovely place. What are you talking about? Graham's gone in to hire some tents. We're hiring tents. What? You've got, you've all got a sleeping bag? Come on, it's not that bad. We're not... I've, so when are they giving us the tents to hire? Swing out now. There we go. Job done. See? What, I don't know what... Seriously, it's on the grass, so it's not hard surface. Okay. I might lend you my mat. It's not going to be as bad as you think. I promise. <laughs> Is that how you uh, park a CCM? <laughs> So this one we can't really complain about because it's an even playing field. We're just all having fun in the last challenge before the head-to-head -head final. So round three done, round four about to start. Now let me make sure I've got all the points correct. <laughs> I'm, in the, now three I'm three in the lead. <laughs> I'm, I'm in three the lead. I'm in the lead. No, there's more. No, what did Christy get last time? Five. Five. So, Christy five. is on more than five now, ten. ten. I'm on five, Laura's on five, yeah. and Charlie's on one. Ooh, so that means gosh, Charlie's how the tables in the have lead. turned. How the wow. tables have turned. How much more happy I am. <laughs> <laughs> There's no bitterness now. You feel the pain inside. <laughs> Isn't it weird? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I don't have a violin big enough I don't to have a play. <laughs> right, bikes for round four. Charlie's on the KTM. I'm on the Royal Enfield, Christie's on the Sinis, and Lars on the CCM. I am. Brilliant. Yes. So, redemption. The mm. points. So, for the last round, when we get past this one, so our finale, whoever has the lowest points can choose the bike they want to ride in the finale. Okay. And so on and so forth, all the way down. So, whoever is at the bottom gets whatever's left at the end. So the CCM. <laughs> <laughs> right. What is it, Mark? The quarry. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, it's a tough old bird. So the start is at the bottom, so you can have a run in. You must stay between keeping the tapes on your right hand side until the top cone. If you don't want to go around the top cone, you can cut out here and then ride out. If you go around the top, you get two points deducted. If you go around the bottom, which is the easy out, you get two points added on. Oh, I had it. 
That's pretty good. Yeah, that's good fun. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got past the hardest bit, which you is did. that you did? the kind of flat face bit there. But that took so much speed off me, so I ran out of speed on the next bit. Just, I was only a half bike length from the flat as well, but hang on. I had to give him a best shot. There was just no way I was going to take the two points <laughs> and try and do that. Too. So, anyway, it's good fun though. So we've just done the penultimate round and had a bloody good go at this at this quarry. But we're now going to move on to the final. And in terms of point scoring, Charlie's winning. He's done a great job on that KTM to secure him that first place. I'm joint tied with, with Graham and Christy's bringing up the rear. So we don't really know what's going to happen next. We've got to pick a bike for the next round. We need to decide who, who's going to choose which bike between Graham and I. But yeah, let's bring on the final. <laughs> Tom said I was a drama queen when I put off the bike. <laughs> say, if, you, if you look at the replay, you know, it does look a bit, you know, drama it, to me. It was a graceful fall. And well, like, and like some people. I was, I was just annoyed with myself and exasperated. Actually, it wasn't drama. Didn't, didn't all of you fall? Who was the only person who cleared that one? I, I never heard of him, the guy I can't who remember. cleared no. it. No. 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 Awesome. I, Genius, whoever did it. I mean, yes. They looked amazing. Anyway, on that note, Join us next time when it will be the last episode in this season. Ooh. Yeah, we have the Motorcycle Olympics finale and also the final part of the Tale from the Trails. And Graham and I swap Ducatis. <laughs> well, oh yes, and then I'm supposed to say they're ride safe. <laughs>